The biggest mining vehicles in the world and their ongoing development are a testament to the never-ending human spirit of engineering and construction that has fueled innovation and progress in this field for millions of years. In the 21st century, we now share our mining sites and our planet with the biggest land roaming vehicles that have ever been constructed. Models like the record-breaking Bagger 293 are titans that stand above anything else with unprecedented power and ingenuity, working on projects of such massive scales that would have seemed unimaginable even 50 years ago. So how did we get here? What kind of power do they have? And how were they informed by the great miners and excavators that have gone before them in history? The tradition of mining is aligned with the birth of human civilizations all across the world. Digging for useful materials that lie deep within the earth has been an obsession that shows no signs of slowing down either. From the Neanderthals and Homo sapiens of Paleolithic-era Europe that searched for flint to make weapons, to the early human societies in Mesoamerica mining volcanic regions looking for obsidian, and through to ancient Egyptians identifying gold as precious and worthy of adorning their kings and queens. Searching the bowels of our planet for new materials has proved difficult for every generation, but the rewards have always been well worth the effort. For utility in building our homes or creating the products that can simplify and enhance our lives. For trade with our quarry becoming sought after and used as bargaining tools to obtain other essential goods and famously for status with jewelry and objects made from mined materials, gaining cultural significance, allure, and a desirability that nothing else in the natural world seems able to replicate. Matching the scale and ambition of the pioneers that dream up these mining operations always involves the pursuit of one thing, better tools tools to help them find more materials, extract them quicker, and keep on moving to scale up and meet demand. In the mining tools world, better always means going bigger and bigger and bigger. Harnessing as much power as possible is the driving force through creations of impressive size. The history of mining tools runs alongside a collection of the greatest inventions and engineering revelations of all time. Where better to begin than with the hottest discovery possible? Fire. Ancient Romans and Egyptians both show records of a method known as fire setting. Huge fires would be built against rock faces. Setting them alight would raise the temperature of the rocks. After a short while of fanning the flames, cold water was then poured over the rock. This thermal shock caused the rocks to crack. And along these splinters and lines, early engineers would be able to uncover what was behind or beneath, using only rudimentary tools to a newly devastating effect. These picks, mattocks, hammers and chisels were the marvels of their time but they also required huge masses of manpower to maintain productivity and undertake big projects. It wasn't long until these pioneers began to look to the natural world for more of a helping hand. The relentless power and seemingly inexhaustible supply of water was called upon to power huge water wheels that powered ancient Roman mining tools, with water-powered bellows also providing vital ventilation allowing the vast armies that worked with them to venture deeper and deeper underground. As time marched on, the engineering projects became grander and more complicated. That meant the loads inevitably became heavier too. No surprise then that more horsepower was needed. Quite literally, of course. Horse-powered gins, or whims as they were also known, gained popularity in medieval Europe. 
lifting ore and debris from mine shafts at a much greater volume than hands could carry. These involved winding ropes or sometimes chains around a vertical drum with the horse tethered to it, circling around for hours on end to provide some serious power without relying on the medieval muscle of a massive workforce. As the mines got deeper, new waves of problems emerged for mining engineers, because the further down you travel in the pursuit of these materials, the greater chance they had of encountering water. Lots of water. Water that could ultimately drown all their chances of success. During the Renaissance period of Europe, horses replaced hand-drawn pumps too, removing more water quicker, more efficiently, and in a cheaper way than employed and paid labor had been for hundreds of years previously. The next phase of mining machine development came with a big bang. The early 17th century saw miners in Hungary begin to experiment with gunpowder as a mining tool in the Banksa Sjevnica and Banksa Bustrika mines. Adopting this powerful military resource as an engineering tool revolutionized the mining industry, explosively paving the way for what was to come all over Europe and eventually the world. Modern mining techniques began to flourish, seeking access to deeper ores, looking for previously untapped seams of materials, and laying the foundations for some projects of breathtaking ambition and scale. By the time the Industrial Revolution took hold, mining was a non-stop world of steam-powered strength, albeit one that still relied on teams of skilled men to support the machines that drove down and through the earth. The dawn of the dagger was upon us. Everything started with the marvelously named steam shovel, invented by the American William Otis, who in 1939 received a patent for his creation that excavated and removed earth. The steam shovel was a crane attached to a railroad car powered by a steam engine with a bucket attached to a boom and a dipper arm. Steam power drove a system of pulleys and gears to move the boom and buckets, allowing the operator to dig and lift soil and rock much more efficiently and in greater volume than ever before. These early models varied in size, with some operating on tracks and some on wheels. It was around 6 meters long and 3 meters wide, with a bucket that could hold approximately 1.15 cubic meters of material. The mining industry of America wasted no time in employing the steam shovel on big projects. It played a vital role in the expansion of railroad construction, cutting through hills and moving massive amounts of earth to lay beds for the tracks. It was also crucial to the development of the Panama Canal, one of the most significant engineering mega-projects ever undertaken. 51 miles of man-made canal. That now connects the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean via the Caribbean Sea. The steam shovel helped move over 200 million cubic meters of earth and rock that were excavated during the 10-year construction period between 1904 and 1914. And more importantly, it laid the groundwork for the awe-inspiring mining mega-vehicles that we have today. The titans that dig deeper, faster, on astronomical scales. During the 1940s and 1950s, German engineers were on a path towards creating the biggest mining vehicles the world would ever witness. These baggers, as they would become known, take their name from the German word for digger, and they represent precision engineering on a colossal scale. And you simply can't get bigger than the most impressive giant bucket wheel excavator of them all, the Bagger 293. This mechanical monster towers above the ground at a staggering 96 meters high, sharing the Guinness World Record for tallest terrestrial vehicle with its ever so slightly smaller cousin, the Bagger 288. It spans a whopping 225 meters in width, sharing that particular world record with another Bagger family member, the Bagger 287. Which is definitely quite a reach for a heavyweight. 
with the Bagger 293 weighing in at an astonishing 14,200 tons. The bucket wheel is over 21 meters in diameter with 18 individual buckets that can each hold more than 15 cubic meters of material, all sat on 12 gargantuan caterpillar tracks. And boy, does it make the earth move. Running on an external power source, powered by a combination of diesel and electricity, consuming 19 megawatts of power at speeds of 2 to 10 meters per minute. The rotating bucket wheel is mounted on a boom. As the wheel rotates, each bucket scoops up material from the face of the mine. The boom can be raised, lowered or swung to the side to access the most area possible. These buckets transfer the payload to internal conveyor belts that can then be moved to production facilities on the site. This bedrock blasting beast can shift an incredible 240,000 tons of earth every single day. The Bagger 293 is an engineering marvel, decades in the making, building on centuries of years of mining knowledge, experience and innovation. Manufactured by the renowned German brand Takraf, a global force in the mining and bulk handling industry. The Bagger 293 represents the best response to increased demand for coal extraction in Germany in the latter part of the last century. They wanted to revolutionize their operations in the famous lignite coal fields of the Rhineland. So, a stellar team was assembled that included Chief Engineer Klaus Dieter Bartsch and the brilliant mechanical engineer Manfred Kuhn. They took on a simple brief that would involve astonishing amounts of complexity and scale. The team's ultimate mission was to create the biggest and most efficient bucket wheel excavator the world had ever seen. Planning of the Bagger 293 began in the 1980s, with the eventual construction taking five years to be completed in 1995, at an estimated cost of around $100 million. It uses high-grade steel, rubber, and plastics that were fabricated at specialist manufacturing plants, then transported to the mining facility's site, where it was assembled and finally started its work. Due to its massive size, even moving the Bagger 293 around the site is a Herculean task, taking around three weeks to move into new positions on site. Its primary job was to work at the Hambach surface mine in Germany, one of the largest open-pit coal mines on the planet, clearing the overburden to reach the rich seams of lignite that wait deep below. The reward is to extract enough coal that can easily power 300,000 homes every day. You may be surprised to learn that for such a colossal and efficient vehicle, there are only five operators within the bagger working tirelessly on a machine the size of an ocean liner moving on land. These teams of workers combine in shifts around the clock, constantly working to keep the bagger running. And the Caterpillar 797F is a monster of a dump truck, over 124 meters long and almost 10 meters high when fully loaded. It weighs in at 623 tons and carries 400 tons of material across some of the toughest terrain in the world, making sure the baggers can do the business time after time after time. Despite the annual million dollar maintenance and repairs due to the huge stresses these excavators are under, the day does come for them to eventually dig their last load. When the Rhine Brown 256 excavator finally reached the end of its life, after 40 tough years at the Garzweiler mine in Germany, due to the size and the sheer mass of this once essential tool, there was only one way to start to take it apart. And that meant saying goodbye with a big bang. The life cycle of mega mining vehicles is around half a century, and with pressure for the energy industries to move further and further away from fossil fuels, their days may be numbered as we enter the next quarter of the 21st century. But for now, at least, these giants are still roaming our planet, digging, working, moving the earth and shaping the landscapes of the mining industry in a huge and extremely powerful way. Remember to hit the subscribe button and ring that bell to stay updated with our latest content.
And while you're here, why not check out another one of our exciting videos? Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.